Outrocast. Temperature difficulties aside and having to do press aside, good day for you so far, David? Great day. Great day. Yeah, I've just been in the studio here making music. And uh, yeah, it's going great, man. It's a nice, I, I walk down, I live about 25 minute walk from here. So I walk down in the morning, kids oh. go to school in the morning and then I take a little walk and then, you know, clear my head and then get to work. So it's all good. Is Fredericton involved in any of that or all of that? Very much involved. Well, yeah, it's where I live. So it's where I grew up. I didn't live here for the past like 20 years. So I moved during the pandemic, I moved home. And it was, it's been an amazing move. Like a lot of people moved during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We prioritized. I got kids 10 and eight. And I kind of figured that I could make records from home in a different way. And so I was liberated a little bit. So where I could move, my mom's solo. So there was a lot that I was kind of like, you know what, man, this, this might work. The timing might work. Actually, what happened was my wife was like, maybe we should move to Fredericton. And I was like, okay, let's do it. So I was kind of, you know, waiting because she's not from here so it couldn't really be my decision as much as it needed to be hers you know what i'm saying so right yeah Fredericton's involved man for sure my kids go to school just down the hill from where i live and so it's it's very much like we live right in town and then i walk and my my studio is actually right downtown like right in the main intersection that's interesting to me on so many levels but the direction i'm going to take all that is when did you kind of realize that you didn't need to live in toronto Montreal or Vancouver to be in the music industry because let's face it just like here in the states if you want to make it back in the day you had to be in New York LA Chicago because there was no work anywhere else yeah for sure like even choosing Halifax which was my home for 15 16 years bigger city was still not Montreal not Toronto you know what I mean it's a different vibe altogether right and it was smaller so no I think that I think you're, you know, there was a certain amount of lifestyle choices. I've always looked at it as being a long-term decision. Mm -hmm. And I think increasingly I look at it like that. I want to be able to write songs and perform forever. Mm -hmm. So where do I need to be to sustain my spirit to be able to have the creative energy that, that is required to write? and to be engaged. And when I go out, feel good about being out and on stage. I mean, from Halifax, what it meant for all those years was that I was, I was taking a lot of planes. I was flying a ton. From here, it means I drive more. We do big drives. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I just got used to that. that was, that's, I wanted to live on the East Coast. I always did. And now, I've, I'm, now I'm home and it feels even better. So it just is, is another step towards kind of living my own. I, I listened to, you know the song, Lukenbach, Texas? Mm -hmm. I love that song, you know, and, and every once in a while, when I was thinking about moving to a smaller town, I would listen to that song, you know what I mean? Just, and you know, Tulsa time, classic yeah. country songs that talk about not needing the big city, but also choosing a different pace. That you know makes I mean? sense. And so, you know, I know I miss out. I, I know I miss out on certain things, but I can go to the city. I'm, I'm in Montreal a lot. I love Montreal. It's an hour flight from here. It's an eight hour drive. If I leave early in the morning, I got an hour, I get the, the right time change. I can be there by dinner. Yeah. And, and I'm in a big city with tons of opportunities. And then when I come home, I'm in the woods and I live, <laughs> a, I, you know, I got a house that I could never afford in a big city. I got a lifestyle that works for me. My kids can walk to school. You know, they can walk home from school by themselves at 10, you know, that, that wow. that's, you know, that's wicked. That, there's huge, huge benefits to that for me. I can imagine. Well, I'm going to be seeing you live in September at the Harvest Music Festival. That's going to be my second time going over to Fredericton. And you have a very varied discography where when they say that there's going to be a David Miles release, you're like, OK, what genre is it going to be? Is it going to be instrumental? Is there going to be a full band? Is it just that guy, et cetera? What should we be expecting from your Harvest set? And well, I'm like, not giving you the whole order of the songs, but is it like with band? Oh, yeah, it's big. Okay. You know, I always think it's like playing Harvest. Harvest is the festival of my childhood. Mm -hmm. Harvest is where I just, it's kind of where the world comes to Fredericton musically, right? And so I was a music obsessive. Oh, from the time I, I was 13, 12. I still am. Yeah. I, you know, I don't think you outgrow being a music obsessive. That's right. You, you don't. But when you're 12, 
13 and you're living in a smaller town, a smaller city like Fredericton, yeah. that opportunity to have acts that come in. I was that kid sitting outside the tent going, what's going on here? Yeah, this is this is different. This is and so it's the place that Harvest holds in my heart is incredibly important because I've it was one of the first festivals I played at. You know, I played on the street, the first, you know what I mean? Like in the smallest stage possible. I, I basically have worked my way up, you know what I mean? Over the years as my career has developed. And mm -hmm. so now when I play there, I kind of pull out all the stops. I bring a, I bring a big band. I'm going to have a band, like a, a full band, backup singers and, you know, keys, guitar, bass, drums, the guys I regularly play with, with the backup singer. It's, a, it's kind of my super band That's and, funny. and it will be a party. It will be a party. It's not going to be, uh, you know, I have, as, as you said, I got a varied discography. I got lots of, you know, ballads and this is going to be more, I find sometimes I write songs with that, with that show in mind. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, we're 10 o'clock, whatever, whatever it is, 9 30, 10, 10 30, people are going to be rocking. So what do I need to bring? What kind of energy do I need to have? What kind of songs do I want in that kind of set? And I almost like imagine harvest. Okay, what's happening? And what's going to really like tear the roof off? It's a very different thing than when you're playing a small country hall in, you know, oh. in, in rural Virginia or whatever, where it's like we're playing trio, which is what I do a lot, singing harmonies. It's a very different thing, right? Like this is a bigger band, bigger tent later at night. And so it's, it's lots of energy, man. It's a lot of energy. I kind of think of it like it's sometimes it's like country funk. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's R and B and, uh, but there's, there's lots of energy. And, and I, I like the band to stretch out. I've always been an instrumentalist at heart. I write songs that are like vessels. You know, I want them to be like vessels where people can really like be a part of the, the ship that's going, you know what I mean? So I give room to the soloists and, and to the backup singers. That's what I'm, I, I try to, that's what I'm trying to build. When I ask that question of what do we get? I think there's a lot of artists that you'd ask that same question. That wasn't intended to be a rude thing. You know, for example, if you're seeing Wilco, are we going to get happy Wilco or are we going to get down or Wilco? But it sounds like we're going to get party David Miles. You're going to get party. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's generally like happy David Miles. I've generally <laughs> come back to, you know, there's been years that were a little tougher for me being out on the road and, and I've been a little yeah. worn out, no doubt. But I have tried to keep a handle on the idea that I feel pretty friggin' lucky to do this. And, you know, and when I get to play on those big stages where there's a big crowd of supportive people, it's hard not to feel that love. It's my hometown, you know what I mean? And so definitely it's not only happy David Miles, but it's celebratory David Miles. It's David Miles showing off his musical friends. You know what I mean? The people I've been lucky enough to play with for years and going, look, look at the talent that we have. Look at these incredible musicians that we have on the East Coast from all over the East Coast that play in the band and and look what kind of fun we can have when we're ripping it up together. Well said. Uh, is there another album in the works at the moment? Always. <laughs> there is. There's very much another record uh, in the works. And we're actually doing some great like I've been I haven't been touring as much right now. And so we're in the thick of it. We're in the thick of it. And it's going it's going really well. Got it. Any chance we might hear a song from that thick of it at Harvest Music Festival? I think so. Okay. I don't, I don't know how we couldn't. Like, you know, when I was talking about those tunes that I know will work, this album seems to be focused on, I don't know if it's coming out of the pandemic or that desire to like make a record that, you know, not that I want to, should be talking, I'm sure I'm not supposed to be talking about this record that much, but I'm so excited about it. It's kind of a party record. Okay. And so when I think about those songs that I know are going to work there, man, it's just like a couple of these songs, they feel like they were built for that. And so, yeah, we'll be playing those because, uh, well, hopefully one will be coming out right probably that same week that the, the festival's happening, but also just because the energy is going to suit it so well. Well, I've got two more questions for you, a Fredericton question and a music junkie question for you before I let you go. And the first, mm -hmm. the Fredericton question here. Uh, where should the wife and I dine? Do you have two or three restaurant recommendations there in town in Fredericton that we should check out, assuming we can get a reservation, it's open, it's not too crowded, et cetera? Oh, there's some great, they're actually, we're in good shape right now for restaurants. I got to say, like having a studio downtown and having clients, like I produce records so people come and so it's been interesting to take people out because, you know, when I'm living my family life, it's not like we go out all the time. 
Right. And so I've been able to actually really get a sense of the restaurants and there are a lot downtown. I'll tell you the kind of from the high end perspective, there's a, a place called the 11th mile and it, it's, they do cocktails and really nice wine and kind of sharing plates. It's as good as anything that you'll find in any big city. I travel to big cities all the time. I love yeah. eating and it really is good. Music's great. Vibe is great. Small, not many tables, make a reservation. It will be, you'll really dig it. Um, okay. Standard, like never go wrong food. I'm about to grab it real soon here. Dimitri's right downtown. It's like a staple of the Fredericton dining. It's Mediterranean Greek food. Mm. It hasn't changed. Ownership has changed. Menu has not changed, which has been, I think, a welcome for everybody who likes Dimitri's. And it's not that it's super complicated. It's just that it's always good. It's affordable. It's right downtown. Uh, those would be my, you know, there's, there's a lot Caribbean flavors right beside me, right beside the studio, man. They got amazing roti. If you like roti, yeah. it's really good. You know, there's, there's, we're in good shape. A couple pubs that are right downtown that have nice patios and everything else. But I'd say Dimitri's, you can't go wrong. And then 11th mile, if you're going fancy, that's a good one too. Well, the last question I have for you, we talked about your varied discography in terms of the genres, but was David Miles ever a metalhead? Yeah. How'd you know? I was just talking about metal and no one ever asks me that. But well, I, I have to say, if if you're of a certain age and you grew up watching MTV. It's so funny. Yes. You <laughs> probably liked Motley Crue, Poison, Van Halen, et cetera. But the question is when you outgrew it and then when you came back to it because the stuff that you liked when you were 12 is the stuff that you like again when you're 30. Yeah, it's a really good point. Well, so it's, um, I skew a little bit earlier than the hair metal. You know, I would say, I would say that would be the end of it for me. You know, I do remember buying like Warrant Cherry Pie was one of my first it, records. It holds up. Uncle Tom's Cabin, I, I saw read, these are real songs. They hold up. I defend one. <laughs> no, it's, have you read the credits on that record? Just not to go off, but read the credits on the record and how they list their instrumentation. It is definitely uh off base and hilarious but i need as, to check that out as okay. an aside um <laughs> i had i'm the youngest of four boys so what came through was older stuff iron maiden metallica early metallica i was an early metallica fanatic i had i had a flag in my window i had the injustice for all flag in my window i had cliff them all on vhs you know the cliff burton documentary yes um, you know, we had Iron Maiden, uh, live after death, which is one of the great live records of yeah. at any genre. It's incredible. Um, you know, Sabbath early, early, like metal, that kind of stuff. But so yes, no one's ever asked me that. I appreciate you asking me because I have been coming back to it. And when I go back to it, I tend to, I would say the ones that really affect me are those are like kill them all and master of puppets i'm a little dis I will, I will get nerdy again i'm a little disappointed with the remasters they're too they're too bright they're they're too bright they weren't meant to be brittle and bright and clear they're meant to be darker it's they're hard on the ears when you're and they shouldn't be there's too much freaking lars is just going on the symbols the whole time if it's too much i end it, it it doesn't translate right that's just my that's just my uh, take on it. Maybe they just always sounded like that, but it feels like they didn't. Uh, but I went back to them recently on on the streaming services, and I was like, oh man, they don't they don't feel the same. But I could listen to Kill 'Em All a lot. I love I know every riff on that record, all the drum fills. It's kick ass. I don't know how to play them. I just know to you know. I mean, I, I know how to sing them. You know. Well, I don't think Lars knows how to play them either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and following up on that, because I wasn't expecting that excellent, excellent answer. Were you a Megadeth fan too? Or were you one of those early Meg Metallica fans that goes, I won't listen to Megadeth? No, I wasn't. And Megadeth just came to New Brunswick. They were just through and I saw it. And I was like, oh, I could be it. I mean, I wasn't. I wasn't. I always thought like, I wasn't, sorry, I wasn't one of those guys who tossed them away. They were never my favorite band. But I always understood the Mustaine, you know, connection to Metallica. And I didn't hold it again. I kind of thought it was cool. Like they were adjacent bands to me, you know, and, and obviously, and they are, uh, but they were never my, they were never the, the go-to. Again, like I didn't control the discography. I was like, the older brothers did. Got the it. older brothers did. So it really wasn't, it was, and it wasn't like you could just go search out music. It's not like streaming services. It's like you have the discs that show, or in this case, cassettes that show up.
and the cassettes that showed up were, and I remember, I remember to this day, the first time listening to Master of Puppets and listening to Battery and the intro and being like, now this is different. This is ambitious. And I was a changed man, but no one asks me because they hear my music and it's more chill. It's like, you know, maybe a little James Taylor, like, you know, softer. And they're like, you know, that's not where they're going when they hear my stuff, but thank you. I, I find that the singer songwriters had to start somewhere before they got there. And it's kind of like if you meet a dentist in their, in their spare time, they're not practicing or talking about dentistry. They're usually doing the exact opposite. So you're saying, what is the opposite? Yeah, yeah, they're dentistry? building motorbikes or whatever. They're motorcycles, <laughs> probably. And then you meet somebody who's a professional motocross guy and they go, what's the opposite? <laughs> probably golf. Yeah. So that's why when I meet the singer songwriters, I go, you probably started off playing too many notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I definitely, uh, you know, I definitely just, but I just have, a, I have a soft spot for it. I was just recently talking to someone about making a metal record. Uh, not me, but them, you know, just kind of encouraging them that that could be a really cool direction because uh, it's it's alive and well. Metal is still a massive genre, but yes, anybody who grew up in that era, it's hard not, it's hard to deny. It's just, it's powerful stuff. And I still, Iron Maiden is on the top of my list for a live band to see. I really, really want to see them. Did they ever play in Fredericton? So therefore Bruce Dickinson can say, scream for me, Fredericton. I wish. I don't think they've ever played. I don't think they've ever, I don't know if they've even played in Moncton. Like sometimes they come to, you know, I don't know where they've played on the East Coast. They certainly haven't played in a long time. Like I almost flew to Toronto, but it was kind of mid pandemic. And I thought, oh, I don't know if I can pull this off. And yeah. But they did play about a year, year and a half ago, I think in Toronto, that was very close. Well, I'm glad to learn about this new side of you. Looking forward to your gig at Harvest Music Festival. Glad there's another record coming soon. David, just keep up all the greatness out there. Right on, man. Really nice to chat. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll connect when you're in Fredericton. I'm really glad that you're coming. Outrocast.